All oh, right, welcome back to another GTN Coach's Corner where you literally get to ask us any triathlon training or racing related questions using the hashtag GTN Coach's Corner and you can drop them in the comment section down below this video or below any other video for that matter and we will answer them for you and whilst you're at it why not hit that subscribe button so that you can watch the future Coach's Corners. So straight into this one, uh, first question from Patrick Fruge. Hey guys, uh, just picked up a gyro aero head helmet uh, for those sweet aero gains, good man. Uh, my question is, how much are you losing in regards to aerodynamics if you use sunglasses rather than the visor? I find myself sweating a ton with the visor due to the lack of airflow. Um, yeah, I, I don't think this is a debate that will ever be put to bed really. Um, some have actually gone to the extent of testing this quite thoroughly and shown there to be very little difference. However, this comes with a big caveat. It obviously depends massively on the type of position you are riding and the type of helmet you're using and also the conditions. So the cost of savings could vary quite considerably. Um, what I will say, if there was no difference at all, you would see world tour riders and track cyclists wearing aero helmets with sunglasses and you don't you pretty much always see them wearing uh, visors um, however as you found with a visor on it can feel like a bit of fishbowl effect and as you may have found on some sort of longer course races as particularly if you do half ironman or full ironman having that visor on in hot conditions and just that prolonged period of time with your head heating up you can really start to feel pretty rough and actually any aerodynamic savings may be lost through overheating later on into the race. Um, now obviously up until recently you saw a lot of the pros in races like Kona wearing things like road helmets or aero road helmets because that added ventilation. But you'd be hard pushed to find any of them nowadays not wearing an aero helmet because I think there's just that better education and knowledge on aerodynamics and also advances in the aero helmet. So actually I'm gonna grab a couple here. So we've got our two Met helmets here. We've got the Met Coda Tronca, which is a slightly shorter tail helmet and the Met Drone, which is a longer tail helmet. Now, a lot of these helmets now have ventilation as you can see on the front, whereas some of the previous aero helmets didn't, which made them absolutely brutal to wear. So as you can see here, we've got ventilation holes on the front, so the air will come through there, track around the head, and then they come out of these little exhausts you can almost see on the back there. So you've got a nice airflow around the helm, and that should help quite a lot, and you should find that on your gyro. But yeah, depends on the conditions you're gonna be racing in as to whether you choose to wear that visor or not. Uh, so sorry, not a conclusive answer for you there. Uh, Next question from Jabanski. Uh, to my three amigos, this year I've been focusing on my worst leg of triathlon, the run. I'm curious, how long did it take you or people you know to go from a relatively active to a competitive run pace? I've just turned 40 a year ago and I'm trying to get a feel for what my expectations should be. Um, I like it, I love the enthusiasm. As of anything, uh, it's important to step things up very gradually. And whilst you're obviously very young, do be careful as you get older. Uh, you may find that progression just needs to be a little bit slower. However, what I would say is it's amazing how much of a difference you'll notice and how quickly if you start following a structured training plan. Uh, so if you are looking to be competitive on the run, uh, depending on the distance obviously you're doing, you should be looking at at least a tempo run and a long run per week. And then if you have time, then I'd maybe suggest throwing in a slightly faster speed session, particularly if you are focusing on shorter distance triathlons or shorter distance running. Uh, but following that format and then any easy runs, including that long run, are kept really easy so that you can focus all your attention on those faster pace runs. And you should really start to see your run paces drop quite quickly. In terms of time frame, obviously very hard to say. It's obviously different from person to person, but I would be surprised if you did this very well, you would notice a significant difference within five to six weeks actually. So yeah, best of luck to you and let us know how you get on in the comment section down below. Next one from Fernando Burton. This is a really interesting one. When I do kick drills, I seem to have more propulsion and even endurance when I'm on my back than on my stomach. Why would that be? Could it be weak hamstrings? Um, I think I know what's going on here and it's actually incredibly common. Um, essentially, I think you are only kicking and trying to propel yourself forward on the leg extension 
phase of the stroke or the kick sorry rather than the flexion and the extension and for some reason and I can't really explain why this tends to be easier when you're on your back as opposed to on your front I know that because I've tried it uh, the other reason it could be is that you're actually kicking too high in the water which is actually unusual most people are too deep because their hips and their legs sink but essentially if your feet are too high and your heels when you're on your front are breaking the surface too much you are just making a lot of splash a lot of bubbles for very little propulsion so obviously if that is the case you want to get your legs a little bit deeper in the water if you are doing kick work with a kickboard perhaps that kickboard just isn't buoyant enough and actually it's sinking down in the water and then you get that seesaw effect and your legs start to come up a bit higher um, going back to the first reason with the the kick and only kicking on the extension to help work on that I might actually suggest putting some fins on because it almost forces you to use that full motion flexion and extension so you're kicking on the way up and starting to use those hamstrings well um, next one um, is from Joanna Monterio um, I'm doing my first half marathon in May and I only started running in January good work. Uh, my goal is to finish in two and a half hours. I'm also doing an Ironman 70.3 in October and my goal is just to cross the finish line. I have an intense five-month training plan but zero experience with road bikes and I'm an average swimmer. Is an Ironman 70.3 in five months a crazy goal for a total beginner or is it doable with consistent training? Um, of course, we would always recommend more time even if you had been training for five years but five months I think it's certainly doable, uh, but it will really require you to knuckle down now, as I think you've kind of alluded to yourself. And when I say knuckle down, you really do. Uh, get a proper program, as it sounds like you have, or even a coach that is going to make a program bespoke to you and also adapt it as you go and stick to it. And that is really important. Don't start making any excuses as to why you've missed a session and you'll catch up. It doesn't happen and you haven't really, unfortunately, got the time to do that and play with that. Realistically, you're not going to start building in a ton of pace specific sessions in five months. Um, given that you're just starting out as a beginner, I would just focus on getting yourself fit and just starting to build up the miles. Don't start throwing any of that complicated stuff. Just get yourself fit. Um, if you were to do anything, I would also focus on some technical stuff particularly around the swim, because if you can iron out any inefficiencies, that is going to save you a lot of energy come the day and also in your training. Right, final question uh, from Mark van der Hurst. Um, he's trying to increase his performance in the water, but after swimming in the pool, he says, I often have to sneeze a lot and have an irritated nose and eyes. Is there any way to prevent or mitigate this? Uh, well, unfortunately, it does sound like you have an intolerance or an allergy to chlorine. Presumably, you are swimming in chlorine. That tends to be the one that gets people. Um, now, to explain this, chlorine in its full concentration would normally burn your skin. Obviously, we don't swim in just pure chlorine in the swimming pool. That would be disastrous. Um, what you find in swimming pools is that it's a very diluted amount of chlorine I mean minuscule but it's enough that's going to kill off the bacteria but it shouldn't be an irritant to most people but the problem is some people do find it an irritant perhaps they're just quite sensitive or uh, what you do find is some people that have been swimming uh, for prolonged periods of time or days in days out uh, you actually find some Olympic swimmers that are in twice a day they start to build up a bit of an intolerance to chlorine um, also those that have asthma may find that when they walk on pool deck on poolside and just sort of the fumes coming from the swimming pool that that chlorine smell can actually start to affect their asthma um, now if you are struggling with this um, I've had to reach out to a couple of friends for their advice on this so basically you just want to make sure that you're cleaning thoroughly after apparently there are some good shampoos out there that are sort of targeted towards this to try and get rid of um, chlorine from your skin and also just if you've got any problem areas perhaps where you get irritated skin just make sure that they're thoroughly cleaned after um, you may need some um, steroid cream um, which probably need to be prescribed to you and just be careful in how much you are applying of that do not overuse it and then I have also known people to use nose clips they found that has helped during 
the swim session has stopped them sneezing whilst they're swimming, but it isn't really going to stop the irritation altogether. Um, but yeah, if anyone else has any advice on this, because I'm sure there's many other people out there, please do drop your suggestions in the comment section down below, because I believe this is you know, quite an issue for a lot of people. So it'd be really interested to hear other people's advice. Uh, well, that's it for this week's uh, Coach's Corner. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and found it useful. If so, please do get a thumbs up, give it a like. And as I said at the start, don't forget to subscribe.